like I said at the top of the show, not doing too hot uh, as of recently, our Kraken. Uh, you know, that six-game road trip, the first three games good. You push the winning streak really high. Um, oh, wait, it might have been a nine-game winning streak. I apologize. Wait, let me double-check that nine-game winning streak. Yeah, pretty sure it was nine. Yep, nine game winning streak. I apologize. That's my fault. Uh, got things mixed up there. So, yeah, that stopped on the last three games of the road trip here. Losing uh, last Monday to the Pittsburgh Penguins, as we were talking to you here recording last week, uh, getting shut out three to nothing. Seattle really wasn't able to generate much of anything in this game. Uh, a couple mistakes defensively ended up playing a factor into this one as Pittsburgh took advantage of that and, and good on them for doing so. Made it tough on Joey Decord to do much of anything against them. I mean, really can't blame him on, on either of the two ones. And then Pittsburgh got one um, on the empty net there. So just a tough one. And obviously with shutouts, we don't give out players at the game. Uh, the next day, so that, that was the first game of back-to-back -back and Seattle was already banged up. And we'll talk about that here in a second. Uh, against the New York Rangers, one of the best teams in the East. Seattle really couldn't do much uh, going on, get much going on in that one uh, as a whole. I mean, they were able to get two goals. Jordan Eberle is our player of the game. Uh, he scored one of them, one goal, one assist, two points, and three shots on the day. Jared McCann had the other one on a power play late into this one when it really was too far out of reach. Um, you just – the banged-up Kraken team that we'll talk about here in a second – couldn't do too much against the East. You know, obviously you'd think that if they'd had a full roster, they could, and I, I imagine that they would. Um, but ultimately that wasn't the case. Then uh, a few days off after that back-to-back -back and to wrap up the road trip against a Pacific Division rival in the Edmonton Oilers, this game was tight. Uh, the Kraken played the Oilers pretty tight. Uh, an old empty net goal here at the end kind of wraps things up. Um, but... Seattle ultimately not able to keep up enough, uh, still banged up, still dealing with injuries, and ultimately it results in the loss um, to Edmonton. I went again with our player of the game on Jared McCann. You know, I could I, I almost went with Jordan Everly in this one as well, um, but McCann in this one, one goal, one plus minus three shots, and a sixty percent faceoff win percentage with the injuries. Um, with some of the stuff that the Kraken have been dealing with over the past few weeks even. Uh, McCann has been stepping into the center role, something that he has done a little bit uh, throughout the course of his career, but not a ton. Um, but he's, you know, just having him step up in that regard is is pretty big in and of itself. So I'm pretty sure it was an empty net goal. No, uh, it's a power play goal late. Sorry. So, yeah, still, I mean, kept things pretty close late into the game. Uh, a, yeah, power play goal late, finish things off. There was a, a bit of roughness and festivities late that we'll address here in a second after we go over uh, the last game of the week and our player of the week. Uh, and it ultimately left Seattle without another key player going into the first game of a four-game homestand in the fourth game of the current losing streak. Uh, Seattle came back to Climate Pledge Arena yesterday, Sunday, January 21st, losing to the Toronto Maple Leafs by a score of 3-1. to one. Uh, Toronto got the empty net goal late. Seattle, kind of the same story uh, as uh, the other few games, ultimately wasn't able to do enough on the offensive end with a banged-up team um, to compete with one of the better teams in the entire league uh, against Toronto. Toronto was coming off of the second game. Well, Toronto was in the second game of a back-to-back. -back. They had played Vancouver the night before, uh, but was ultimately not able to take advantage of that. There were a bunch of different opportunities for Seattle to get on the board. Ilya Samsonov, uh, Samsonov, who's struggled this year for most of the season, played pretty good. So even when Seattle got opportunities and got shots on goal against Samsonov, he was in the right place at the right time. So it just things not going their way. Uh, a couple mistakes defensively for the Kraken gives Toronto their two goals. And we're sitting here looking at a four-game losing streak now. Uh, this game included some festivities as well, but none that have resulted in suspensions so far. Um, Connor Timmons of the Toronto Maple Leafs did receive the maximum fine um, allowed for a hit that sent Brandon Tanev into the end boards. It was a pretty bad hit, uh, and it resulted in this melee that you can see on your screen as captured by a photographer on site. 
Rio Giancarlo. Uh, our player of the game in this one, goaltender Joey Decord. Joey, 23 saves and an I-20 save percentage. Joey's so big in this one, even though the offense is struggling, even though the team is without several key players, Decord just, you know, continues to keep his team in the game and continues to have a great season. So our player of the game, it could have gone with Joey. I feel like if we go with Joey week, it's going to get every week. It's going to get boring. Uh, I went with Jordan Everly. Jordan Everly, uh, a guy that is dealing with some of the stuff that's happening that, again, we'll talk about here in a second, uh, but was able, didn't miss any of the games over the past week. Uh, which included four games, two goals, two assists, four points, five shots, and one block. Um, him and that McCann and Tatar line has been great, and that was the only line that changed, uh, stayed consistent last night in that loss against Toronto as there was a bunch of line movement uh, with all of the injuries and such. So in case you're not aware, Kraken are dealing with a few injuries. Uh, I think we might have talked about it last week before the game against the Penguins, uh, but the team was without Andre Burakovsky and Matty Beniers, and Vince Dunn was listed um, out as well without an injury designation. Matty Beniers would be placed on injury reserve that day um, with, and I think I don't think it that was designated either. So we, but we believe it's an upper body injury considering the hit that he took from Cole Sillinger in the loss, uh, no, in the win over Columbus during the road trip. Uh, we haven't seen Matty on the ice. He was around the locker room yesterday, uh, but he just popped in quick in and out uh, two days ago. I apologize. Um, but that was all we've seen of him. He hasn't been skating. Uh, I didn't see him yesterday in morning skate, uh, even in the locker room. So hoping he's back quicker um, as opposed to a long-term um, outage. And Andre Burakovsky did return in the loss to Edmonton. So he's back, which is nice. You know, <laughs> just the injuries, man. Whether it's with this team, you know, Berkey's had his bad luck with injuries as well. And then Vince Dunn. So Vince Dunn hasn't been given an official designation either. He was practicing out in full gear uh, ahead of the team's practice on Saturday. Uh, he was kind of not using his left hand. And I imagine that's, you know, if we're going to speculate, it's part of the job. Uh, if we're going to speculate, I believe it's a left hand injury because um, everything else he skated pretty normally, but he just avoided using his left hand. And, you know, considering the fight that he got in with Cole Sillinger trying to defend Matty Beneers after that hit that I just mentioned he took against Columbus, it makes a ton of sense. So I, I, it'll be interesting to see what's going on with that hand. Um, Dave Hacksaw, when he talked about Dunn, sounded more optimistic than you know pessimistic about the injury. Um, and he he skated pretty well ahead of the practice on Saturday. He didn't practice at all, didn't see him at all on the ice on Sunday, though, um, whether it was ahead of morning skate or for morning skate. So that'll be something to keep an eye on as well. A few players have been dealing with an illness that's been going around the locker room. Uh, that in the illness took Adam Larson out for the rest of the game during the road, uh, one of the games during the road trip. Uh, Jaden Schwartz and Jordan Eberly were dealing with it, but both of them still played yesterday against the Maple Leafs. Kyler Yamamoto did not. He was a scratch, but we believe he's dealing with that illness as well. When asked about it yesterday in morning skate, Dave Haxel said they're not quite home free yet from that. So that's still dealing with the locker room. So you've got guys that are legitimately hurt physically. You've got guys dealing with illness. Uh, it's, it's not great. It's not great, uh, for the Kraken right now, as they continue the skid, as we are just four Chicago, Columbus, St. Louis, San Jose hour, four games ahead of the all-star break. So you're hoping to get healthy. Um, and you've got a few teams who have been struggling ahead of you to potentially be able to do that. So, um, the only thing we've got here, excuse me. In the team-related news section is that for John Hayden uh, was recalled from the HL Coachella Valley Firebirds as a corresponding move to Matty Beneers being placed um, on injured reserve. Otherwise, um, it's around that time of the year where we get to the Seattle Sports uh, Star of the Year awards put on by the Seattle Sports Commission. Every year, Seattle Sports uh, Commission puts together nominees for different awards, specifically in the categories of the, you know, Men's Sports Star of the Year, Women's Sports Star of the Year, and the Sports Story of the Year. Uh, now, the Kraken had two different nominees in the two different votes. Matty Beniers was uh, as a nominee for the Men's Sports Star of the Year for his Calder uh, Trophy winning campaign. Um, 
and the Kraken as a whole from last year's group that went into the playoffs, took the Dallas Stars in round two all the way to game seven, are nominated for the sports story of the year. On Saturday, after practice, we caught up with Philip Grubauer, who was obviously big uh, throughout the playoff run and throughout the course of the season for that playoff team, and alternate captain Yanni Gord, um, who, again, an another big impact player, uh, to talk about that and what it really means for this Kraken team um, to be nominated for this award. So we'll go to those two videos right now. Yeah, obviously, with the run we had last year was uh, really important for the organization and for the city as well. Um, that was really, really special to be a part of. Obviously, nom being nominated uh, for that is a huge honor, not just uh, for the individual guys, uh, just because uh, the organization, so for the organization, I speak here and uh, it's uh, awesome. Can you speak a little bit to last year's team's performance? Obviously, you know, it kind of some people off guard and really made some noise in the playoffs. You've made your own respective playoff runs in the past. You know, what can you say about the team's push to the playoffs and then those incredible two rounds? <laughs> yeah, I don't think we had the start we wanted to last year at the beginning of the season, but then uh, we came together as a team and figured it out and um, had a couple important games. Like uh, one of the most memorable moments is probably that um, road game or that. Uh, road trip we had where we won like eight in a row or seven in a row so um, that was really important to put us in a spot to be able to even play in the playoffs and fight for a playoff spot and then uh, yeah we took it over from there and playing Colorado in the first round and having that um, yeah battling with them till like game seven was pretty pretty important and pretty special to the guys I mean this group hasn't experienced that and uh, was, was huge. How does the Washington sports culture inspire you to be a better athlete? Because you've been around at a few different events and seen some of these athletes in, in action. And you know, I know there have been some collaborations between the teams. But how does this you know, state sports culture inspire you to be a better version of yourself? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it's unbelievable when you look at Seattle and how the fans uh, care about the sports team and with what passion they go into it and being a part of a Seattle sports team, it's an incredible honor. Um, and obviously we want to represent them, Seattle, the city and the organization in the best way possible on and off the ice and, and even in the summer. Yeah. My favorite sports memory in the city, um, I think was winning the first playoff home game here last year, um, or even game seven in, with, with the team. That was incredible. Um, I don't think that has happened too many times before and I think my favorite sports moment as a fan is just like sitting in the baseball stadium watching watching uh, baseball obviously I love football too and watching uh, a couple football games so um, there's there's not one that points out to me um, baseball when the Mariners made the playoffs that was a uh, uh, extremely uh, nerve-wracking as a fan so uh, definitely a moment I can look back to I had to have you switch with a different Seattle sports team for a single game, whether it's the Sounders or Seahawks. You know, you've been to a few Seahawks games, you mentioned the Mariners. What team would you want to suit up for for a day in this city? Oh, I would love to uh, suit up for the Mariners. I got to know a couple guys and the staff in the back, and then obviously we were down there for the Winter Classic, got to know the, the equipment staff down there uh, pretty well. So um, I would love to be a part of a Mariners game. I got to throw the first pitch. So that was uh, that was special, but uh, I would love to get down there on the field and actually hit one or throw one or catch one. About it a little bit, uh, I think it won a classic. But do you think you would be a catcher because it would translate? Or? Uh, and when I when I played that uh, MLB softball celebrity softball oh, game okay. in Denver, I went two for two on the hits. Uh, so maybe I could hit a couple yes. better. It would definitely be more natural as a catcher. Hey, Seattle sports fans, vote now. I mean, it, it, it's uh, it's huge. I mean, it's uh, it's very nice to hear uh, that we're we're in the nomination. Um, everybody worked super hard last year to to get to where we were at at the end of the year, and and now um, how we we played as a team last year, and it was a lot of fun. And um, I think the most fun, um, yeah, we've had together as a group was uh, was last year in the playoff. It was uh, terrific and. Uh, the fans uh, were 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 so much. Uh, they were so behind us, and it was uh, it was a great, uh, amazing. And can you speak a little bit more to the you know the performance of the team? Obviously, uh, the eight-game road trip was so big, uh, as well as the two playoff rounds. You know, beating 
Colorado in seven, pushing Dallas to seven. Just the performance of this team, because you've been on cup yeah. teams, you know what it takes to get to the playoffs and play in the Stanley Cup playoffs. I think it was huge. I think it was such a team effort. Everybody uh, contributed uh, throughout the season. Uh, we needed every uh, every uh, every guy in this locker room, and that's what made this team so unique. Is uh, there was it wasn't one or two guys; it was a whole group, and uh, everyone sacrificing uh, towards one goal, and it was to to win games, and and uh, it reflected very well on 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 this team and and how uh, we played as a group. And I thought that was the biggest uh, thing for us last year was was uh, how united and how close we were, and uh, and we wanted to uh, to win at uh, any price. You've been to a few different events, you know, not really to the Kraken around the city, obviously sounding the siren at UW was a little, a little bit fun. Um, how does the Washington sports culture inspire you to be a better athlete just because of all of the great athletics that we have in the state? Yeah, it's it's awesome uh, playing here uh, in this environment. Uh, just uh, seeing how much um, uh, the fan love their sports here and, and witnessing it uh, firsthand from the first uh, uh, game here in the Climate Pledge to uh, the playoff run last year. Um, it, it, it makes me want to get better and every single day makes me want to uh, improve and and uh, and help my team win eventually that's that's the end goal and that's what you want and I think like uh, just the Seattle um, they're, they're so great with their sports and and uh, they're so uh, uh, their fans are, are amazing so um, it, it's a lot of fun playing here uh, my favorite um, uh, as a Kraken would be the first uh, the first game here uh, I think um, um, I think the atmosphere was uh, was so much fun. It was uh, it was great. It was electric. Uh, I took the first face off of the game, and um, yeah, it was very very special moment uh, um, in in that uh, first game here in, in Seattle. Yeah, it might have been the the sounding the siren at the um, the U Wash game uh, uh, before this year. I think it was uh, it was a lot of fun, and uh, yeah. Um, again, uh, the atmosphere, it's so electric in, in that building, it's so, uh, it's so cool and uh, being able to do that, uh, it, it was a lot of fun. Hey Kraken fan, vote now at seattlesports.org. Nailed it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you saw from Yanni, so it's the last day of the public vote for the Seattle Sports Star of the Year Awards, as I mentioned. Sports Story of the Year, the Kraken, uh, last year's team nominated for that award, along with four other nominees. Uh, Matty Beneers for his Calder Trophy winning campaign last year is nominated for the Men's Sports Star of the Year Award. Again, four other uh, nominees as well. And then the Women's Sports Star of the Year Awards. Um, one of them is in the rain segment that we'll talk about here in a second. Um, but so that ends today. Um, so by the time you're watching this, once you're done with it, or I mean, if you've got access to a second screen, of course, seattlesports.org, as Yanni just said, and they did the little extended his arms thing. Uh, God bless him. Um, oh, I totally forgot. He's suspended for two games. <laughs> so you saw that happy smile. Yeah, he he uh, got suspended for two games for a charging hit in that Edmonton game that was a little funky. Uh, sport Seattle's fans are a little upset. And I think it's more because of the fact that Yanni's suspension came so quickly as it compared to when Kraken players have been hit dirty this season. The suspension's kind of the the ruling from the league has dragged on and it hasn't necessarily been fair compared to other hits around the league. <laughs> so funny way to follow up Yanni there. Uh still he's 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 awesome. Um but yes, seattlesports.org. You'll be able to vote there. It's the final day of the public vote, so get those votes in. Um, otherwise, that will wrap up our Kraken segment. We'll go over to the next three games here of the next week. Uh, all three of them will help wrap up a homestand before one road game the following week before the All-Star break. So uh, next week, starting uh, January 24th versus the Chicago Blackhawks, that game uh, at Climate Pledge Arena, 7 o'clock start time. It is on uh, – TNT and Max, so we're not on route that game, so be aware of that for your streaming purposes. Uh, the Kraken now sit at a 19 win, 18 loss, 9 overline, overtime loss record, uh, 6 in the Pacific Division, falling behind Edmonton and behind Calgary at the moment with 47 points. Uh, after that, on Friday, January 26th, they will play the St. Louis Blues at 7 o'clock Pacific time. 
And then to wrap things up on Sunday, they will host Cole Sillinger, who the Kraken got into a fight with, more specifically Vince Dunn, um, and the Columbus Blue Jackets on the 28th uh, with a 6 p.m. puck drop. So three teams that have relatively struggled this year so far. Um, they still got talent, so don't fall into that trap. But definitely teams that as you're a, a, a roster that's ailing from injury and illness, uh, you can hopefully be able to take advantage of and get yourself back into the win column ahead of the All-Star break.